Hallelujah. 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 We're happy to have um, Brother Lovell's mother and daddy with us tonight. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Uh, uh, I'm going to get on to that rascal for all that evangelizing he's doing. Amen. He's preaching over and he's preaching over in a place you don't want to go if you get car sick. Thayer, Missouri. Anybody ever been over there before? Woo wee. You don't want to go over there if you have trouble in a car. Amen. If you would, tonight, stretch your hand out toward my wife and let's pray for her tonight. She's really sick. Matter of fact, I tried to get her to stay home tonight. But uh, put your hand toward her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for my baby, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll touch her body. I pray, Lord, that you'll take away that pain and take away what she's dealing with. Under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you'll touch her body tonight. Touch her body tonight. By your stripes we are healed. We declare it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you glad to know he's a healer? Amen. I'm thankful for my wife. So thankful for her. I don't like for her to be sick at all. And I, I'd be sick a thousand times before my wife or one of my babies was sick. Um, but imagine what the Lord feels. The shortest verse in the Bible. Everybody knows it. It was the first one that you went to memorize when they asked you to memorize one in Sunday school. John chapter 11 and verse number 35 and it says, Jesus wept. Brother Larry, Jesus didn't weep because he was sad Lazarus died. Because he had already told the disciples, we're going to go wake him up. Brother Derek, the resurrection was a done deal. Lazarus died to be brought forth. The reason that Jesus wept is because what Lazarus had to go through before he brought him forth. The Lord is not happy that we have to go through things and we have to fight battles. And I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord is not happy that we have to endure struggles and we have to continue to go through so many things. And it's like something else crops its head up every day, every morning, every evening, and every night. Sometimes in the middle of the night, the Lord is not happy about that. But sometimes we got to go through things in order for the Lord to perfect us and that the glory of the Lord might be made manifest because unfortunately when we're on the mountain so often we fail to give glory to God look at your neighbor and say how long is never I know what you're thinking right now Philosophically speaking, never is not long at all. It didn't happen. Huh? How long is never? Now, thank you, Brother David, for what you said about my preaching this morning. Uh, because I've wrestled with it this afternoon. Uh, uh, because... Uh, uh, boy, I just I just know that one of these times I'm gonna get through to some folks, <laughs> and I, I wasn't necessarily thinking of Brother David in particular this morning. But thank you for saying that, brother, because uh, uh, <laughs> just thank you. Psalms chapter six and verse number three says, "You don't have to stand. Don't stand. I'm just preaching right now." Psalm chapter 6 and verse number 3 says, My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Psalms 13 and 1 says, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul 
having sorrow in my having having sorrow in my heart daily how long shall mine enemy be exalted over me turn to somebody and say how long it's got to be refreshing to us I know we read these things and they've got a, a heavy weight to them but it's got to be refreshing to us brother McKinney to know that David and Asaph and the writers of the Psalms they can relate to what it's like to go through a trial they can relate what it's like to stand in a place and cry out to the Lord how long how long how long the new King James version of Psalms 35 and 17 says Lord how long will you look on rescue me from their destructions and my precious life from the lions Psalms 90 and 13 says return O Lord how long and have compassion on your servants Psalms 94 and 3 says Lord how long shall the wicked triumph how long will the wicked triumph how long how long till victory how long till the Lord shows up how long until we come out on the other side how long until the smoke is cleared how long until the rain goes away and the sun comes out how long until I wake up in the morning and jump up and click my heels together throw on my clothes and, and excitedly face the day rather than go to the bathroom and wonder why I'm even alive how long does it appear that God has abandoned me or forgotten me? How long does it look like every decision I've ever made is a bad one? How long until it looks like I've done something right? How long until I no longer give the devil an opportunity to have ammunition against me? How long until I mature and I wisen up? How long until I come through this valley? Oh, hey, we love to hear, preach it, brother. Amen, brother. And sometimes even a good blessing, Lord, lets you know you're doing exactly like you thought terrible. But I'm in the middle of a sanctuary tonight of blessed people. Look what we saw this morning. And I'm going to tell you something, folk. You hear me well. You hear me, hear me, hear me. We cannot, we cannot sit back uh, and look at people who are just recently been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, and baptized in Jesus' name uh, and watch them worship. Uh, we've got to become a part of that. Uh, the reason why you get new life uh, is so you come alive. Uh, the reason why there's fresh water is so the stagnation all goes away. Let me tell you something right now. You don't have to feel the Holy Ghost to worship Him. You don't have to feel the Holy Ghost to praise Him. And furthermore, you don't have to feel nothing to dance. Turn to your neighbor and say, how long? If we would be honest, I won't ask for your hand to raise. But if we would be honest, how many of us have prayed that prayer? Or maybe we're too sanctimonious to pray that prayer. We think that anybody that's got the Holy Ghost should never say, Lord, how long? Till I found it in the Word of God, Brother McKinney, over and over and over again. How long? How long? How much longer will my enemies triumph over me? How much longer do I have to stay down? How much longer do I have to keep fighting? How long, Lord? Hebrews 13 and 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. The question how long has been answered with never. It doesn't matter if I win here or not. This is not my victory. This is not 
a place of, of an achievement. I'm looking over beyond the blue. I'm looking that over the next hill. We'll be home. We've got to get something in our spirit that says this is not heaven. This is not what I'm looking for. But whether I come out of here or not, I'm going when the trumpet sounds. Whether I feel like I'm winning or not, the Lord is with me. Whether I feel like I'm on top of the world or not, the Lord is with me. Whether I feel like I want to feel or not, the Lord is with me. Somebody has got to hold on to that promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never. Oh. Brother McKinney, never means there ain't been one time. Not one time has there been a child of God who the Lord has left. He's not forsaken you. You're not alone. You're not lost. The hand of the Lord is upon you and the Holy Ghost is still working through you. And if you'll wipe the tears out of your eyes, if you'll fix your hair, if you'll get the frown off your face, you're going to find that the Holy Ghost can use you right where you are, that the Holy Ghost can bless right where you are, and you can be a part of revival right where you are. But how long offers the question, well... When I get out of this, when I come through this, when I finally get an answer that I'm looking for, then you better look out, devil, because I'm going to do something for God. Huh? When I get past this, when I come out of this, you better watch out. Think about it. I don't mean to belittle a song. I kind of like it. I'm going to walk right out of this valley, lift my hands and praise the Lord. What's wrong with lifting your hands right in the middle of that valley? The one thing that the one thing that the devil is afraid of the people of God figuring out is the Lord is with you all the time. The devil does not want us to figure out that the Lord is with you right in the middle of your mess, right in the middle of your trial. I'm going to go even one step further. The Lord is with you when you fell flat on your face with the worst mistake you've ever made. Oh, saints of God, hear me well. We have got to pray for an attitude that the glass is always half full. We have got to pray to be delivered from the spirit of chicken little. The sky's not falling. The sky's going to open up. And when his feet touch the Mount of Olives, I'm coming with him. Oh, how long? It appears, it appears, Brother Derek, that it's not a sin to say how long. Don't look like there's anything wrong with saying, Lord, I, I mean, if you're done with this, I just want to let you know I am too. If you was waiting on me, I just want to let you know I'm ready. But what is not okay is for the devil to get you believing you're defeated. And that the Lord has truly abandoned you. Because that, you hear me well now, that, my friend, is when you begin to try to take things in your own hands. Oh, come on now. You want to why our boys are fighting in Afghanistan and Kuwait? Is because the Lord made a promise to Abraham, you're going to have a son. And it didn't happen like Abraham thought it was all to happen. So him and Hagar got together. He had an adulterous relationship, which really wasn't back then, but that's a story for another time. And Ishmael was born. Come on, we got to be delivered. We got to be delivered from our faith failing. I come to tell you tonight. How long is never? He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. I'm not telling that you got to, that you will. I, I'm not being good enough today. The Lord's not with me. That's a bunch of hogwash. But what the Holy Ghost is wanting to do is wanting to pull you to a high place in the spirit, which may be a low place in the flesh. It may be in a place where you feel all alone. You don't have a friend. You don't have a confidant. But you got Jesus. Amen. 
Boy, I wish I could sing. I'm going to sing this song one of these days. Rain on if I can sing or not. I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, abused, confused, and I forgot the next part. But as long as I got King Jesus. And I found out something tonight. You got to receive this. I'm not going to preach a long time, but I ain't done yet. But I found out something tonight. As long as I got King Jesus is ever. Oh, come on now. You say, man, how can you walk out of a service like this morning and feel like a failure? I don't know. I've been asking myself that same question. But you know what, Sister Jamie? We ain't going to quit till we got everybody. What did it say? I want it all back. Huh? I've got the Lord with me. I've got the Lord with me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Stop worrying about your things. Stop worrying about your stuff. Brother Pete, it came back to me again this morning. And it's a, it's a motto, a creed by which we should live. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Stop seeking to get deliverance from where you are, but seek for the Lord to be king of your life. Let me tell you something, I ain't got no pr trouble praying to hour no more. I start praying for everybody in this church that's got some kind of problem they're dealing with and battling with, and I forget all about where I'm at in the tabernacle. And I just go straight to hell. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? I don't need to be in the holy place because I've got this one and 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 this one. And then the Holy Ghost said, you just need to tell them I'm with them. Oh, come on, what does Psalmist say? Where am I going to go to get away from the Lord? If I make my bed in hell? Oh, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I soar, Brother Pete, with the eagles, thou art there. Where can I go? Oh, whoa, where can where can I go to flee from the presence of the Lord? I ain't found it yet, Brother David. There ain't nowhere I can go. How long is never? The answer to that question is we don't know yet. September 28th, which is coming up in a few days, 2015, an evangelist preached in Louisville, Texas. The Pentecostals of Louisville, I think that's the name of it. He said this, please receive it. I'm not going to repeat it a bunch of times, but write it down if you have to. If you don't have time to write it down, buy the CD. Our current struggles are just mission training for what God is preparing us to do. Our proper response now determines our effectiveness later. Our current struggles are just mission training for what God is preparing us to do. Our proper response now determines our effectiveness later. There is a carnal way to respond or a natural way to respond which is how anybody would respond and then there's a way to respond when you know you've got the Lord right by your side what has God, God, what has God gotten prepared for you what is it that 
coming through this. You know, I, I mean, Brother Terry, you've been in the military. Some of the rest of you have been in the military. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. But one of the things in your, in your uh, bag that you carry with you is not a powder puff. Brother Terry, they don't give out mascara and eyeliner. And they don't, they don't bring you into the mess hall and teach you pearl one and stitch two. But you're going to get up early in the morning and you're going to work. And you're going to work. And you're going to go through, through some opposition. How many of you have ever lifted weights before? Y'all know I have. Y'all can tell. Huh? But the only way your muscles can grow, does anybody know what happens to make them get bigger? They tear down. They rip. They actually rip in order to expand. They will not get bigger if they don't. Oh, we're going through a lot of stuff. I mean a lot of stuff. And I'm telling you what, something, something raises its head up, not every day, like five times a day. Different folks. Some of it's like super serious stuff. But it all matters to us. And we have got to make a determination. Am I going to allow this to make me? Or is it going to break me? And the difference between my failure or success is my awareness that he's with me. That he's with me. The book of Daniel, the entire book of Daniel, I believe the first six chapters relate stories of Daniel and his friends and then Brother, Brother McKinney. Seven through the end are, are prophecy chapters of visions and things that that Daniel saw. Some of them are coming to pass now. You know, some of them are in accord with Nebuchadnezzar's dream and then some of them in, in Revelation. And the, the first place, if I'm not mistaken, the first place we are introduced to the term the abomination of desolation is in the book of Daniel. But the book of Daniel, the entire book, every story, every occurrence, everything relayed to us from the book of Daniel is in captivity, is in a struggle, is in exile. The entire book, even, you know, you almost think that when a new person comes in and takes over, they'll set loose all the slaves. Didn't happen. There are two, two tyrannical rules, two kingdoms that are in control in the book of Daniel, and both of them are over the Jews. In the very beginning, three years of training is going to take place. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they're there. They're taken, they're set apart, they're special, they are anointed, they are called. God's got something big for them. So big that the, that the king and, the, and the, the chamberlain of the king take them in and they tell them, we're going we're gonna to feed you like this and we're going to take care of you like this. You're going to eat the king's meat and you're going to drink the king's wine and, and y'all are going to be the best of the best. Till Daniel spoke up and said, I'm going to paraphrase, but said, uh, we don't really believe in that. We, we don't really believe in that. See, we've got some strict dietary laws that God gave us. Not to be mean to us, but to set us apart from everybody else. That's part of our peculiarity. He said, we've got some strict dietary laws and I can't eat your stuff. Did some study one time, probably stuff been offered to idols and wine that's been used in, in the ceremonies to, to, to the gods of the Babylonians and can't do it. He said, well, but you, 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 so many of you know the story from Sunday school, but I just want to get here to the end. Finally, Daniel says, listen, let's make a deal. For a period of time, we're going to eat Pulse, kind of a kind of a a mushy vegetable type, not very good, nothing. Potted meat made out of squash and turnips or something like that. 
I mean, I, I don't really know. But that just sounds terrible. And I like all three of those things, but not together. He said, we're going to drink water and eat pulse. And after a period of time, we're going to just check and see. If, if, we're not, if we're not in good shape, Brother Terry, then we'll go down your way. After the period of time had passed, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in better shape. They were stronger. They were smarter. They had in no way suffered from staying obedient to the Word of God. Later on, there's an image built. There's an image built. They said that what time you hear the dulcimer, the sackbut, the psaltery, the harp, etc., etc., and play the music, you fall down and worship that image of the king that the king has erected. When the music began to play, everybody bowed down to worship all but three fellers. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar was told about it, some sissified title tales. Punks, jealous of them. Enemies, wicked, coming against them. Said, just going to let you know, everybody in the whole kingdom bowed down but them three boys. First off, that ain't true. That ain't true, because I'm going to tell you right now, Daniel didn't either. Don't believe it for a second, but it was only them three. Hey, hey, ain't it crazy that the devil will make you think you're the only one trying to do right? And then, I'm going to get done in a minute. I know I've had y'all for like 12 hours today. Feels like it. The king said, listen boys. I know y'all made a mistake. I know you made a mistake. You meant to bow down. Y'all my buddies. Y'all good fellas. Y'all do what's right. I'm going to play it again. And you're going to bow down. They said, King, we don't have to think very long about this, brother. I know that if since we didn't bow down, there's a fiery furnace waiting on us. So we're just going to let you know up front, we ain't bowing down. Then the king got mad and the Bible said his face got all ugly. And he cranked up that furnace seven times. And in the meantime, the children of Israel had said, listen, buddy. We might burn, but we won't bow. The Lord's able to deliver us either way. But whatever happens, never is a long time. You know the story. They throw him in the furnace and Nebuchadnezzar in his pride and arrogance causes several of his strongest men to be killed because it, it took all of them to, to take those three little boys that was bound hand and foot and throw them in the furnace. The men died. They fell dead. They threw them in the furnace. Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, go look and see. Or I'm going to go look and see. He gets over there and finds out. He don't see three but four men in the fire. I see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and, and what else? And the fourth man is likened to the Son of God. Everybody say exile, captivity, prisoners. Never. <laughs> Never. They came out of the fire. The Bible says not even the smell of smoke on them. Somehow it managed to burn off all their bonds, but their clothes didn't even have any stink on them. And they came out of the fire. And then later on, some of Daniel's enemies don't like him. They want him out of the way. They get the king to make a decree. For 30 days, you can't pray to nobody but the king. Well, the king finds out. He tells Daniel, I'm sorry, man. I messed up. And Daniel says, okay, no problem. I'll holler at you later. I got a prayer meeting to go to. So he goes and he opens up the windows of his house toward Jerusalem as he has at other times. And because the king has sealed the decree, it can't be broken for 30 days. The, Daniel prayed and the king said, listen buddy, I love you, but I got no choice. Even the king has to be subject to the law 